वेलकम ऑल इन दिस लेक्चर वी आर गोइंग टू सॉल्व वन मोर एग्जाम्पल दैट इज एग्जाम्पल नंबर थ्री द लूप ट्रांसफर फंक्शन ऑफ ए फीडबैक कंट्रोल सिस्टम इज गिवन बाय जी ऑफ एस इन टू एच ऑफ एस इज इक्वल टू के एस प्लस सिक्स ओवर एस एस प्लस फोर वी नीड टू प्लॉट द रूट लॉकस ऑन द एस प्लेन सो वी हैव टू फॉलो ऑल द नाइन स्टेप टू प्लॉट द ग्राफ of the root locus on the s plane so let's move on to the step number 1 that is determination of number of poles and number of zeros so we know that on equating all the brackets of the numerator to zero we get the number of zeros and on equating all the brackets in the denominator we only get our poles so on equating s equals to zero we will get our pole one at s equals to zero on equating s plus four equals to zero we will get our another pole at p2 equals to s equals to minus 4 so this is our two poles on equating the numerator part to zero we get our one zero at s equals to minus 6 so the zero z1 will be at s equals to minus 6 so from this these are two poles and this is 1 0 so we can say that number of poles is equals to 2 and also number of zeros is equals to 1 only moving on to next step that is calculation of number of branches of root locus step number 2 number of branches of root locus so the number of branches of root locus can easily be determined by the formula maximum of number of poles comma number of zeros so maximum of number of pole is 2 and number of zero is 1 so maximum of 2 comma 1 is obviously 2 so we can say that two branches of root locus we need to plot on the graph let's move on to the next step that is step number 3 in this step we need to find out the number of asymptotes that will exist so the number of asymptotes can easily be find out by the formula number of poles minus number of zeros so since the number of pole is equals to 2 and number of zero is equals to 1 only so the number of asymptotes is 1 only step number 4 is centroid of asymptotes centroid of asymptotes is easily be denoted by the symbol x where x is termed as summation of real part of 
poles minus summation of real part of zeros whole divided by number of poles minus number of zeros since we know that our poles are p1 lies at 0 pole p2 lies at s equals to minus 4 and 1 0 lies at s equals to minus 6 these are our two poles and 1 0 so sum of the real part of pole means 0 plus minus 4 is equals to minus 4 only minus real part of 0 that is minus 6 divided by number of pole that is 2 minus number of 0 that is 1 so it is equals to 2 so we can say that the centroid of asymptote is equals to 2 moving on to the next step calculation of angle of asymptotes so the angle of asymptotes can easily be determined by the formula phi equals to 180 multiplied by 2m plus 1 divided by number of poles minus number of zeros for the calculation of angle of asymptotes we need to first find the value of m here since the value of m starts from 0 and and adds number of poles minus number of zeros minus 1 on putting the value we get it starts from 0 and and adds number of pole is equals to 2 number of 0 is equals to 1 minus 1 so the result of this expression is 0 only so we can say that m value is only 0 on putting the value of m in this expression we get phi equals to 180 2 multiplied by 0 since m value is 0 now plus 1 divided by number of pole that is 2 minus number of 0 that is 1 so 180 degree is the angle of asymptotes moving on to the next step that is root locus lies on which part of real axis so for this calculation we need to first plot the s plane so this is our s plane this is our imaginary axis this is our real axis our first pole was at p equals to 0 our second pole was at s equals to minus 4 our first 0 was at s equals to minus 6 so we need to just plot these three onto this s plane since pole is denoted by cross symbol and 0 is denoted by circle that's why pole at 0 so it is a cross here at 0 after that minus 4 will be somewhere here so since it is a pole that's why we will put cross here after that since at minus 6 it is a 0 after that we have to find out the number of reasons 
so here is plus infinity and here is minus infinity so reason x1 starts from 0 and ends plus infinity reason x1 ranges from 0 to plus infinite reason x2 ranges from minus 4 to 0 reason x2 ranges from minus 4 to 0 reason x3 ranges from minus 6 to minus 4 and finally our fourth reason is x4 that ranges from minus infinite to minus 6 These are our four reasons onto which the root Loki may lie and we have to check that in which region or in which area of the real axis of S plane the root locus will lie. So talking about the reason number first that is x1. So we need to count that in the right hand side of x1 area how many poles and zeros are there. Since there are no poles and zeros, that's why it is an invalid area. Talking about the reason x2, that is ranges from minus 4 to 0, that is this reason. In the right hand side of x2, how many poles or zeros lies? Since we notice that here is the one pole that lies in the right hand side of x2. So we can say that one pole lies in the right hand side of x2 since 1 is an odd number so we can say that it is a valid area talking about region x3 that lies from minus 6 to minus 4 here is minus 6 to minus 4 in the right hand side of the x3 how many poles or zeros lie so here is the one pole and here is an another pole so we can say that two poles lies in the right hand side of x3 but two is an even number that's why it is an invalid area moving to the next reason that is x4 that lies from minus infinite to minus 6 Finding out the number of poles and zeros in the right hand side that is 1 and 2 are the poles and 1 is the zeros that lies in the right hand side of x4. So 1 0 and 2 pole that is number 3 lies in the right hand side of x4 and since 3 is an odd number that's why it is a valid area. So we can say that our root locus lies from first one is minus 4 to 0 and second one is from minus infinite to minus 6 We also have to notice one fact that in this question we have given two poles and only one zero and we know, know that always the branch of the root locus emerges from the pole and arrives at zero. So any of these poles will emerge from this pole and arrives at its zero. But what about the P1? Here the no zero is present for its arrival. So we have to assume an imaginary zero here at minus infinite somewhere. So this is the imaginary zero. And since we know that 
if the two conjugate imaginary zero lies on the real axis of s plane then there will lie break away point and also here are the two conjugate poles also lie on the real axis of s plane so here break n point also exist so both the break in and break away point exist in this question and we need to find out this since for the calculation of break in and break away point we have to first form the characteristic equation and in our question we have given g of s into h of s is equals to k s plus 6 over s s plus 4 and characteristic equation is termed as 1 plus g of s into h of s is equals to 0 on putting the value we get 1 plus k s plus 6 s s plus 4 is equals to 0 on taking the LCM s into s plus 4 plus k s plus 6 is equals to 0 on cross multiplying we can get s square plus 4s plus ks plus 6 equals to 0 taking the term of the k on the one side and remaining term on the other side we get k equals to minus s square minus 4s over s plus 6 so we know that since dk by ds is equals to 0 and it is mandatory condition for the calculation of break in and break away point so differentiating the value of k we get dk by ds is equals to s plus 6 minus 2s minus 4 minus minus s square minus 4s and differentiation of s plus 6 is equals to 1 only whole square with denominator s plus 6 to the power 2 so on evaluating we get minus 2s square minus 4s minus 12s minus 24 minus minus of s square minus 4s is equals to 0 so again we get s square plus 12s plus 24 is equals to 0 this is the quadratic equation and we need to find the root of this quadratic equation so s will be equals to <coughs> minus 12 plus minus under the root 12 square minus 4 a value is 1 and c value is 24 upon 2 into a value is 1 here so the value of s is equals to minus 12 plus minus 6.92 divided by 2 only so s value is 
minus 6 plus minus 3.43 3.46 I think so our two roots are as equals to minus 2.54 and as equals to minus 9.46 these are our two roots and since we need to find out both the break in and the breakaway point so we can easily say that our breakaway point is this one and our break in point is this one since we know that breakaway point can is only be calculated in case of imaginary poles and break in point is calculated whenever to conjugate imaginary zeros lie so we concluded that which is our breaking point and which is our breakaway point based on the graph that we evaluated so here is the graph and since we got the two points that is minus 2.54 and minus 9.46 these are our two points if we plot minus 2.54 then it will lie here and if we plot minus 9.46 then it will lie somewhere here since a point which lies between two zeros is always known as break in point so we can easily say that this is our break in point and since minus 2.54 lies between 0 and minus 4 that's why these are two poles and the point which lies between two conjugate poles on the real axis of s plane is known as breakaway point this is the basic concept on the basis of which we can find out which is our breakaway point and which is our break in point moving on to the next step that is calculation of angle of arrival and angle of departure since we know that angle of arrival and angle of departure can only be exist whenever our poles or the zeros are imaginary but in this question all the poles and the zeros that are mentioned from the open loop transfer function are real only so the concept of angle of arrival and angle of departure is not applicable here so we have to skip that uh, step and we have to move on on to the next step that is plotting of the root locus onto the graph of s plane so plotting this is our s plane this is our imaginary axis of s plane this is our real axis of s plane since we have our one pole at zero or another pole p2 at s equals to minus four our one zero at s equals to minus six our break in point at minus 9.46 and break away point at minus 2.54 so let's plot it at p equals to 0 we have our one pole at p equals to minus 4 here is minus 4 we have another pole at z equals to minus 6 here is minus 6 
we have our one pole and we also assume that one imaginary is zero at minus infinite this is plus infinite at minus 9.46 that will somewhere around here this is our break in point minus 9.46 and at minus 2.54 this will lie here this is our breakaway point so let's plot the graph since from the previous calculation we also got that number of branch is equals to 2 only and number of asymptote is equals to 1 centroid of asymptote is equals to 2 and angle of asymptote is equals to 180 only this is the whole information that we calculated since the number of branches is equals to 2 so we can easily say that the two branch will depart from the any of this pole from both this pole one from this pole and second branch from this pole and departs from this pole and arrives at these zeros so we can say that it is making the angle of 180 degree after arriving at this pole so let's talk about this branch which will emerge from s equals to minus 4 pole that is this so this branch will go from s equals to minus 4 to this breakaway point first that is s equals to minus 2.54 after that this branch will go to this break in point following anti clockwise path after following the anti clockwise path it will go to this imaginary zero making an angle of 180 degree so in this way this branch of the root locus will emerge from s equals to minus 4 and arrives at this zero that lies at s equals to minus 4, 6 let's move on to the second pole that it lies at s equals to 0 so the another branch of root locus will emerge from s equals to 0 pole in this direction and from this breakaway point it will depart and arrives at this break in point that is minus 9.46 in this direction and after arriving at this break end point it will go to the imaginary zero in this direction so the complete path will be like this so this is the whole graph of the s plane thank you